All right, it's now 7 o'clock, and uh, this is Morning Express. For those of you that might be joining us now, we welcome you, and it's time for us to review the week that has been, politically speaking. And I have a very well and able panel this morning, and uh, I'll start by reintroducing them. And we have uh, Godfrey Osotzi, who's a nominated member of parliament. We have uh, Mohammed Eden Farah, who's an advocate, and Bernard Wakoli, who is a political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning, basically to review the week that has been. Now, is NASA dead or alive? The difference of opinion between two NASA core principles could not be any wider. As Wiper Party leader Kalonzo Musioka says, he is not aware that NASA is on its deathbed. This is coming just days after the core principles Moses Wetangula termed NASA as history. KTN senior reporter Rita Tinina takes us uh, in an in-depth look. The building bridges handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and NASA leader Raila Odinga, some analysts say, may have been the beginning of the disintegration of NASA. With NASA principals Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musioka, Musalia Mudavadi, and Moses Wetangula no longer reading from the same script. Wetangula, just over a week ago, while addressing Ford Kenya delegates in Mombasa, appeared to confirm that the NASA coalition no longer exists. Uh a moribund organization. <laughs> NASA is history. And uh, for us, we always say uh, those who ignore history run the risk of repeating it. We were in NASA, as for Kenya, in a coalition of the willing. We suffered a massive betrayal by our presidential candidate. But Kalonzo Musioka has dismissed his core principles statement. The thing I'm now seeing on, on the papers is uh, NASA is on its deathbed. Uh, and I, I consider myself an important player, I think. <laughs> and I'm not aware that NASA is dying. The wiper leader who was addressing a conference on mediation at the Strathmore University in Nairobi says he is willing to try and reconcile Raila Odinga and Moses Wetangula. Uh, if anything, I have to now mediate immediately. Uh, this one I'm going to do, mediate between my brother Moses Masika Wetangula and Raila Amolo Odinga because Modavadi and I have no problem. The Ford Kenya party leader has been on a tirade with Raila Odinga ever since he was ousted as Senate Minority Leader. A section of MPs from NASA affiliate parties, ODM, WIPA and ANC on Wednesday threatened to kick Ford Kenya MPs out of parliamentary house committees if they fail to disassociate themselves with Wetangula's statement. And analysts will be watching to see whether Kalonzo's self-assigned mediation role will amount to much. Rita Tinina, KTN News. All right, and remember the hashtag we're running is Morning Express KTN. You're welcome to participate in the conversation, and you do that by Twitter. The Twitter handles are going to be displayed. Let me start with you, Honorable Osotsi. Um, are we just dealing with semantics here? Because there are those who are saying that NASA is not dead. And yes, it is not dead on paper. It is not dead when it comes to, you know, the fact that uh, the parties that are party to it have not gone to the register of parties and said that, you know, we are, uh, we are out. So on paper, it is there. But really, when we talk about NASA being dead, we're talking about the idea. We're talking about the movement. We're talking about the things that NASA stood for. We've not had that out. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, let me uh, clearly put it this way, that uh, NASA is not dead. I am one of the signatories of the NASA coalition uh, as, a, as the Secretary General of ANC. And uh, we had very, very clear ideologies in that uh, NASA coalition agreement. We had uh, a lot of other things that we agreed uh, uh, with all the four partners. And parties. when you say it's not dead, do you mean it's not dead on paper? Because that's what I was trying to distinguish. Yeah, yes, it is not dead as far as the register of parties the, is concerned. The, this, this, thing, this thing they say, paper, that is just semantic. Because, for example, if you go to National Assembly, you find that uh, members of the four partner parties are uh, occupying positions, courtesy of NASA. For example, in the National Assembly, we have uh, Honorable Robert Mbui, who is wiper. He's the deputy to Honorable Mbadi as a deputy minority leader. We have Honorable Chris Wamalwa. He's a deputy whip in the National Assembly. And we have various committee chairmen from various parties. I am from the ANC. I'm the vice chair of uh, implementation committee. 
If you go to Senate, the same thing. Honorable, okay. and, and, Honorable and, Malala, mm -hmm. they cannot, you cannot say it is, it, it is dead. not on but, paper. But Nasa, because, because we operate as a team in parliament. Right. And Nasa, many times, especially just before we go to the elections, was described as an idea. Yes. as a movement yes. because it represented certain things uh, that they wanted uh, accomplished in this country. We can name them corruption uh, to be dealt with, inclusion, we have the issue of uh, uh, national resources and, you know, uh, sorry, electoral, electoral reforms. reforms, but that seems to be silent. Bernard Wakoli, do you agree that mm -hmm. NASA yeah. is yeah, still alive? Just maybe before you go to uh, Bernard, to I think what is happening in NASA is that there are some people who have not recovered from recent events. For example, the Uhuru Park swearing in of Raila Odinga, and then subsequently the handshake, and then subsequently the removal of uh, Honorable Wetangula from the position of minority mm. leader in the Senate. They have not recovered. And all these events that you are seeing, especially uh, touching on Honorable Wetangula, it's because they have not settled down. All I can ask Honorable Wetangula uh, is uh, please just settle down. By settling because down? Because Honorable Raila has said that he, he was not involved in his removal. And I can tell <laughs> you, because I, I sit in parliament, that uh, Honorable Wetangula had a problem with the senators themselves. Because how come even a single senator Did not from his him. own region could not support him at his level? I am sure you can get one senator who can support you. Okay. Uh, yep. let, uh, allow me to, to bring in Bernard Wakoli here. And first of all, Bernard, I'd like to hear from you. And away from the semantics, mm. is NASA still alive, really? Uh, I'll uh, take you through a number of uh, uh, issues that we have been uh, handling of recent. And uh, the statement of NASA's death has not originated from uh, uh, Honorable Moses Wetangula. You remember immediately after the, the swearing-in of 30th, the purported swearing-in of 30th, uh, the Honorable Ray Lodinga called uh, uh, a national management committee within his party at the steps of the Orange House and said um, that uh, from the event of the 30th, now every party is reorganizing and um, uh, NASA was formed for the purposes of winning elections which? and which we did not win. Now we are focused on, on the 2022 elections as a party. And we encourage our partners also to retreat and focus on strengthening their party. That ODM was now going to strengthen itself for the 2022 politics. After that, then uh, we, we, we saw the, the March handshake, which also caused reports within the NASA coalition. Because as a, a matter of principle, if you are working as a, a team, you have three principles or four partners. Then there's an event, something that you feel is going to change the dynamics of this country. It's uh, just with the courtesy that you, even if you don't want to involve them, to tell them this is what's happening. Because the other principles were very, in fact, on that day before the handshake, these uh, other leaders were calling for dialogue. They were saying this country is going to, uh, go into chaos if we don't uh, dialogue. dialogue. So then, and uh, ODM was like, no, there's no dialogue. We are forming uh, people's assemblies. We are doing what? We want to, to cessation. In fact, there was a petition that by an ODM MP to, um, to electoral commission seeking uh, cessation of some part of this country. Then we have the handshake. You know, it came as a surprise to some of these principles. So do you think, do, do you think that, then uh, that was the <coughs> nail that So, so when, when, when mm -hmm. Honorable Wetangul is talking about betrayal, you know, he's talking from deep within his heart. And Kenyans need to give him time to explain himself because he understands what happened between him and Railoninga. So seeing MPs who are not part of the principal making, uh, the, like the Honorable Sotsi, coming and castigating uh, Wetangul on his own statement. You know, MPs have three roles in parliament. They have oversight, legislative, and uh, you know, representation. So attacking a fellow member of the opposition, uh, is, uh, is that related to their role? You know, but, they, but they should be talking about <laughs> they should be talking about government, mm. oversighting government. But now saying that uh, although you've still not answered yeah. my question as to whether NASA, NASA is dead or alive, principally, after. principally on paper, NASA exists because Wetangula said there are assets and liabilities 
that uh, an organization need to, when it's dissolving need to be shared eh? mm -hmm. and looked into. But in terms so of, there are those assets in, in that terms uh, of need NASA to be, as a movement, mm -hmm. NASA as a voice of the people, does it still pra exist? Practically, practically, NASA is dead. Uh, legally, NASA still exists. Because, okay. And people, people are not uh, <coughs> talking okay. about what happened to, to Mashinani Party mm -hmm. when uh, Isaac Ruto exited. Because Isaac Ruto was also part of this uh, uh, NASA thing. Mm -hmm. So we are only focused on these uh, four. But we are not talking about... And if there was a party that was supposed to exit NASA, it was uh, ODM immediately after the handshake. Mm -hmm. Because they had uh, recognized that they were going to work with the Jubilee, so they are part of the government, and it, okay. it, it, it would have I, I, made allow, sense allow me to bring in for, Mohammed, for uh, be, be, I, I, I know um, Osotsi, you want, you want before, to answer, but allow me to just in. bring him in, yes. uh, just to give us his comments. And mm -hmm. Mohammed, of course, one of the things that possibly is causing ripples within NASA, we'll come to Jubilee in a bit, but what is causing ripples within NASA is the fact that uh, with the handshake, one of the, would say, major principles, Raila Odinga now seems to have moved to Jubilee, or is Jubilee friendly, which has caused ripples to that. Do you think Raila is synonymous with NASA to a point where if Raila is now part of Jubilee, whatever that means, then NASA has very hard chances of surviving as a movement? Right, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, what I do understand is that NASA initially was formed on a willing, willing purpose, and the purpose was to win the elections. Now. That never materialized. Now, as uh, my colleague Geoffrey said that, uh, Wakoli. Wakoli, sorry. Yeah. Uh, as Wakoli said that, um, ODM stood at the doorstep of uh, uh, Orange House, saying that they are now targeting uh, 2022. Yeah. There's perfectly no harm in that. There's perfectly no harm in that. Now, uh, when I said it was a collision of willing parties, what I meant was uh, someone like Wetangula, Wetangula will had, have relevance with NASA. In the absence of NASA, Wetangula will have never been where he is today. And uh, uh, if we go to WIPA itself, WIPA or Kalonzo Musioka, Kalonzo Musioka's interest lies sitting with, uh, uh, with having the ideologies of NASA. Mm -hmm. Right, now, if I come back to your question that uh, um, with that, that patriotic move Raila did mm -hmm. in going for that handshake. Well, as my colleague has said, the country was burning before and after that uh, Uhuru Park swearing in of Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Now, every leader, including I think uh, my colleague here, every morning when they come up, they will come up uh, with the idea that we should be talking to each other. We should be embracing each other. But now when that uh, patriotic move happened and that nationali uh, nationalism acts that was done by Ray Lodinga, then again we came up with words like betrayers and all those, uh, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. weird, weird words. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, go on. No, no, I was going to go to a but yeah. finish what you're saying. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, what I will advise to Wetangula, although I'm not in a position to advise him, but what I will have said is that he should stick with NASA. He should stick with NASA for his own relevance. For his own relevance, uh, relevance. for his survival. Uh, yeah. Before Sotsu comes in, <laughs> this, no, 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 no. this issue uh, no. for, for um, relevance, mm. when no, Tambula no. was a cabinet secretary no, no. before I'll, I'll NASA. Allow, allow Sotsu to have, have okay. his say, because so you, no, ha you have your time. You have your time. You, you'll, relevant. you'll get a chance, Sotsu. <laughs> okay, let me say this. Let me first of all clarify some of the things he has raised here. One is that there is nothing wrong in each of the four parties strengthening itself, because they are not... NASA is not a political uh, party. Yes, and they didn't fold NASA. up for them to form NASA. Each yeah. party yes, remained yes, still yes, in yes. Yeah. 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 So there's nothing wrong in ODM strengthening mm. itself, Ford Kenya, ANC, and WIPA. There's nothing wrong. Two, he has talked about the swearing in. I want to tell you one thing, that I am privileged to have been part of the process of formation of NASA and thereafter any other event that has occurred. And these stories that you've been hearing about, oh, Nigerian line, oh, Ray Laudinga told us to go here, and it's all a package of lies. Because this was confirmed very clearly by one of the principals. Honorable Mudavadi appeared before an AKTN interview and said he did not attend the Urupak function because he did not believe in it. We expect people like Wetangula to be principled enough to come and tell Kenyans the truth. 
You cannot keep on telling Kenyan a tired lie. <laughs> Three, Buena Wetangula, as I said, he should settle down politically because he is increasingly giving this perception of a jilted lover. When the handshake happened, they were very agitated. And maybe they all, went, Remember they all went to Western Province mm. and told the, our people, I come from Western Province, and told our people, we are very unhappy with Raila. He has betrayed us. We have learned our lesson. Now we want to merge our two parties into one party within one month. It is now four months. Our people are still waiting for that one party. Mm -hmm. As our people are waiting for that one party, each one of them is announcing his presidential bid independently of the other. Mm. And then one is coming out and saying NASA is dead, another one is saying NASA is alive. This is a kind of confusion that we are saying we will not allow this confusion to thrive in our region. So we are telling Honorable Wetangula, and we will not fear saying this. He is saying that we are uh, trying to uh, accuse Honorable Wetangula. When Honorable Wetangula says all manner of things about Raila Odinga, which we think is untrue, he, he, he is free to say it. But when he's attacked on the same, then he complains and starts right. saying, yeah. mm -hmm. young people have been sent to come and attack me. Okay, we so want to tell Wetangula that the major beneficiary of Raila Odinga's engineered coalition, starting with COD and now NASA, the major beneficiary is Wetangula. Very good. Because when all the Very principals yeah. were yeah. out yeah. in the cold, mm. he was in the Senate as a minority leader. Mm. Even in this last election, Honorable Mudavadi did not contest for, play, for anything because under the NASA summit, they agreed that let us sacrifice support, for this country. Yeah, but he one. went ahead and contested for Senate, and he gave us a lot of problems in Western. Because how then would you convince people in Western that NASA is going to win an election when of one of the principals has decided to, to go for Senate. And of course, there was a question, what is he going to do if yes. NASA won? What was he going to do? Was he going to exactly. relinquish his Senate seat? And, and now and he's and in and Senate. Mm -hmm. He wants to even compete for a small seat in Senate of a minority leader. How can a NASA principal, a NASA principal who is a potential presidential candidate, be a junior, <laughs> a junior to Lusaka, All right. who comes uh, from his own country. <coughs> All right, I want us to wind up on this. Uh, Bernard I, 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 I'll give you the last say on this one before we move to Mao. Mm. Uh, your, your last say on this, and maybe there's something you wanted to add on to you that. Know, you know, politics is very dynamic, uh, Mike. And uh, from where I sit, uh, our political realignment for 2022 elections is uh, already on course. Um, Wetangula has already declared his presidential candidature. And uh, from the look are, of are things... Are we to take him seriously, honestly? From the look of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the media is giving him publicity. And in politics, there's no bad or, but do or you good do publicity. But do you believe that... So, uh, so he maybe the publicity is getting... Uh, might just be adding points to his uh, political presidential dream. And having been in politics from uh, 1992, mm -hmm. elected politics uh, from 97, you know, Wetangula has, uh, you know, experience in politics. Musa David has experience in politics. So to see leaders who have just come in, like Osotsi, who was nominated. In fact, he's not elected. He was nominated, mm -hmm. uh, castigating uh, elected but leaders. But it doesn't mean experience. he doesn't have a point. Just because no, he has he, a point, a but, but he has a point. Mm -hmm. But the point is being focused on a wrong target. Because what Wetangula is saying is their arrangement, their talk between him and Raila. Mm, the, 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 the right person to come out and refute the sentiments of uh, Wetangula is Raila Odinga. Not seeing uh, um, uh, 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 a collection of MPs uh, coming and saying what uh, Wetangula is saying is uh, as if they were on phone. Because Raila himself, during the swearing in, he said he knows where the other principals are. Mm. You know, he said that and okay. said there's no problem with that. <laughs> so people should give right. Wetangula time mm -hmm. to express himself, and may, may to talk about all these things, you know, mm. because those are the kind of thing that Kenyans want to listen and, to. And maybe that's what Honorable Sots is saying, that Wetangula needs to settle. Maybe it's the same thing you're saying, but just... He's settling by re rearranging his party right. and I running think, for think, president. Running for president. I think, yeah. I think uh, Michael... Uh, I, I need us to move on to something yeah, else, sure. but yeah, um, just go on. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the, the woes of Wetangula is all about... Uh, uh, 
the way he was ousted from the leadership of uh, the Senate. It was all about uh, the confidence in which the people he was leading. Uh, you know, when you have a team that you're leading and they have no confidence in you, mm -hmm. you just ought to resign and give them a space. Mm -hmm. If you don't, and he was pushed out, he should not be calling and saying that, oh, Raila was behind it, or oh, someone else was behind it. He should sit back and focus on, mm -hmm. as he said, on his next level of Well, he, he did yeah. mention and he said that if that he was going to be removed from Senate, it was going to be messy, it was going to be noisy, but we're still waiting for the mess. Maybe it's, it's already coming. noisy. Uh, it's already <laughs> noisy, but there you go. It's now 21 minutes after 7, and I want us to look at something else that is of national interest, and this is to do with the budget allocation that was given to the judiciary. And uh, although late, the Chief Justice, uh, David Maraga, came out to say that uh, that amount uh, is not something that we should wish away, and he requested for Kenyans to be patient with the judiciary. However, However, the deputy president also came out and weighed in on that. Let's listen into what uh, the, uh, the chief justice had to say. The judiciary's total budget allocation was further reduced to 14.5 billion. Out of this, the development budget uh, from the government is only 50 million shillings, compared to 2.6 billion allocated to the judiciary in the financial year 2014-2015. The Kenya shillings 50 million is expected to cover new and ongoing projects, repairs, maintenance, as well as ICT infrastructure for the courts. We are at a loss over how to use 50 million for all those uh, purposes. The main consequence of these drastic cuts is that more than 70 court construction projects will without doubt stall. This is uh, more so because the World Bank funding, through which 29 of the projects are financed, expires in December, and there seems to be no willingness to extend that period. This is the anticipated uh, impact of the budget re reduction. 40, uh, 41 government-funded projects, which are at various stages of uh, completion, will stall. All right, and I'll start with the Honorable Sotsi. It sounds there like the um, Chief Justice is almost, you know, begging. Whereas this should be a budget allocation that should be done right from the top from Treasury. Why would we get ourselves to this point where such an important arm of government is receiving half the money that they have uh, requested for? Well, I, I think uh, I want to agree with the Chief Justice uh, on the frustration of the, the judiciary, judiciary for the issue of allocation of budget. Um, this is a matter I even raised in Parliament when we were discussing the the budget uh, as to why such a very critical institution, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the arms of the government, can be given a limited uh, budget, whereas some other uh, less strategic uh, um, institutions have been given uh, uh, quite a lot of money. Uh, for example, is uh, this uh, social safety net uh, money to the old, uh, which if you ask anyone, any member of parliament will tell you he has a lot of problems with the old people uh, complaining uh, to him or her that they have not received the money. But in this budget, we allocated over 20 billion shillings to that one. Uh, well, uh, as much as I support the idea of affirmative action for the old people, uh, I think uh, a lot needs to be put uh, in uh, management of processes that will generate revenue to support the, the old people mm. and not to put in money which is not accounted for. Okay. So there is still a problem with our budget management process. We have made advancement in terms of uh, uh, allowing parliament to participate in the process of budget making, but there are still challenges here and there. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, the judiciary, I think, when it comes to supplementary budget, 
I think this is an issue that uh, we look into so that uh, judiciary can be given the money they need. That they need. But All on right. the other side, I want also to say that uh, there are two aspects. There is a, um, a capital uh, budget, uh, and, and then there is a recurrent budget. Uh, there were some aspects in the capital budget for judiciary, uh, like construction, of okay. courts and or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the, some people thought that judiciary should focus o a lot, uh, largely on the software side of uh, uh, justice, not on the hardware not side. The hardware. Because and, really, and we have an institution in government that mm -hmm. deals with construction. And, and I want us to the manage them a little bit here and give the other gentleman a chance. So let me yeah. bring in um, Mohammed Aden as an advocate. Should Kenyans be concerned when a, such an important arm of government seems cash starved, so to speak, and from the Chief Justice's words there, it feels like uh, he's almost uh, asking Kenyans, get ready. Yeah, indeed, Michael. Uh, I mean, if you go back into the history of this country, the doctrine of uh, separation of power has been compromised. And uh, what you can see here is that two institutions that are in tension, which is the legislature and the judiciary. I mean, the fact that the judiciary has questioned or has interpreted a number of laws that has been acted by the parliament doesn't mean that the judiciary is fighting uh, the legislature. In which um, uh, I will say that, I mean, uh, law enactment and law, law enactment process is the work of the parliament, while interpretation is for the judges itself. Mm -hmm. And the judges have been doing rightly what they have been employed to do so. Now, uh, what I will say is that, uh, Parliament is more frustrated, and it's more like uh, it's more like it's looking the judiciary as it's another, uh, I mean, uh, enemy, of which it's not. I mean, uh, the fact that uh, cash has been staffed to the judiciary means that uh, a number of projects, almost 70, uh, 70 court buildings within the country, is being stalled for another one year again. Uh, almost 50 and above. Uh, mobile courts that has been created by the current leadership of the court, uh, of the judiciary will again stall mm -hmm. that means uh, that means justice will be denied to the locals the far end delayed locals as well exactly mm -hmm. now uh, what i will advise now that we are honored to have uh, a member of parliament with us today is that they should be they should relook instead of uh, now focusing on the supplementary budget they should relook on what's happening right now and they should treat judiciary as another arm of government mm -hmm. and as a friendly arm of government um, as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Farad Wakoli, as yeah, we wind up. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, I think the observation by the uh, Chief, Chief Justice, Justice is uh, very much in order. But one thing that um, I find interesting is uh, the Chief Justice of uh, the Supreme Court coming to the public and addressing media on issues that uh, are, um, you know, of pertinent to this country, and uh, there are channels that you could have aired those uh, issues, like, you know, seeking the audience of parliament and explaining yourself. You know, coming to the public and addressing and saying we don't have money is like calling, um, mobilizing, or, uh, uh, or looking for sympathy from the public that, yes, as a, an institution, we have been denied this and this. Eh? Therefore, uh, we will not be able to perform. So we will not be able to perform and weeping emotions from the public. And it's not good because it's now setting uh, the public against the, 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 the parliament, uh, against the legislature. legislature. And it's very important that also legislators need to perform their duties. You know, in this country, we have this problem of everybody explaining himself away from issues because budget-making process although it's, uh, proposals are made by the, uh, the uh, Treasury. But the Parliament plays a very big role in ensuring the allocation of resources to various departments. And uh, it, it would have been very good to see uh, MPs saying we gave this uh, institution enough money depending on what we saw fit. But you know, everybody in every forum you meet members of Parliament, they are saying, okay, uh, the judiciary was not given good money as if they were not part of that process of allocating, of allocating this money. money. Mm. And uh, Mike, you'll realize that uh, institutions like parliament, 
you know, receives a lot of budgetary allocation because they're the people who sit on those things and make. Mm. Look at the committee that is investigating the sugar scandal. Mm. It has a membership of around 39 people. This is a classroom. It's not really a committee. <laughs> that, and they, they draw allowances on from, every, from that. every mm. meeting. Yeah. So I think there the, the should be a sense of responsibility 